What's the biggest lesson you've learned from researching and doing this work on this topic over the last few years? Biggest thing you've learned about yourself or about humanity in general? Yeah, there are two things I think that, uh, that stand out. Actually, three things probably that stand out. Um, one, the, I too, for a long time, thought affairs only happen in troubled relationships. If you have everything you want, there should be no Why reason go to go looking elsewhere. But then I began to hear more and more people come into my office and say, I love my partner. I'm having an affair. You know, in the same way that when I wrote Mating in Captivity, people would say, I love my partner. I, we have no sex. And I was like, you know, I thought if you love, you desire. And now I thought if you love, you're faithful. So this idea that not all affairs are symptoms of relationships gone awry, that people in happy relationships also stray, and it isn't because of their partner or because of something in the relationship. That there's another theme here, that affairs, and this led me to the second thing, mm. which is that you always have to look at infidelity from a dual perspective. At the heart of affairs is betrayal and hurt, but there is also longing. Longing for an emotional connection, longing for intensity, longing for a different sexuality, longing to reconnect with lost parts of ourselves, longing to suddenly feel alive because people have allowed themselves to feel dead on the inside. That, what it did to you and what it meant to me, that you have to be able to figure out both mm. is a much more useful way to help people. Yeah. How do we, you know, all those things we're talking about, longing for a desire of someone else or a different experience or something from the past or all those things you're talking about, how do we get those things in our partner if we're feeling those things that they're missing? Say that e again. Even if we love our partner. Yeah. We're not, you know, someone comes to you and is like, I love my partner, yeah. but I feel like I'm missing these other things. Yeah. How do we not miss those things or create those in our relationships? <laughs> Do you know how many times I say to people, tell me something. The person that is here in this other relationship, is that the one who comes home? I mean, the one that your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, uh -huh. is dealing with is not nearly as charming and as attentive. You know, when you prepare your suitcase and you fly and you choose your carefully chosen clothes and you prepare yourself and, and you know, you don't bring work with you when you go to, you know. But when you go home, you're on your phone the whole time. Mm -hmm. You bring the leftovers. You're not nearly that attentive. You're way less charming. Your humor is gone, you know. And, and then you tell me that your, your, your wife is boring or your husband is boring. And you? Who are you here versus who are you there? Mm -hmm. Not who are they, who are you? So that's the first thing. It's like what happened to you that you let this thing seep out of you? And what makes it difficult for you to bring this back into your own relationship? Mm. Why, why is why, it? Why is that? <sighs> Multiple <laughs> reasons why people, why people neglect themselves in mm. some way, right? Yeah. Why is it that there you can be such a free woman? I mean, here is this boyfriend of yours who think you hate sex, you have no interest, you are utterly, you know, frozen. And this one is like, it's the same woman. What happened? You know, and on top of, that's the bigger lie. The bigger lie is not only that you're having a lover. The bigger lie is that your husband, your boyfriend has no idea what's the truth about you. Mm -hmm. Why? And then different stories. Sometimes it's stories from childhood, you know, I have no idea how to bring that part of me in the context of family because family was the place where sexuality was the most dangerous. No. So I have never known how to experience pleasure at home. Home was a place where I made sure to be safe. Pleasure I took somewhere else. Then you start to see the way that people have carved out and compartmentalized themselves and the reasons behind it. Now is real therapy work. That's a different, yeah. you know, that's when you start to really try to understand why, why, why can't you integrate the different parts of you? Mm. Is it kind of like the idea of always dating in your relationship? It's like always trying to be your charming self and not forgetting it. How you got into the relationship, don't like forget that. Is that kind of the, uh, the concept? I, or? I, I don't know if it's always dating, but, for, but for sure, the couples that are erotic couples, are couples who maintain a level of attention on each other. Mm -hmm. they, 
they, they don't take each other for granted. Yeah. They, they flirt, they are physical, they, they continue to play with each other. They create the they, de they, desire. They create desire. I mean, you, you, it doesn't just stay. I mean, it is an amazing thing to see how attentive people are to their creative projects, to their artwork, to their businesses, to the, and how often rather neglectful even a date night it's nice but what do you bring to the date night i mean it's just do going you, through the motions or is it creative do, you do yeah. something you know look we know that if you do familiar activities with your partner it's very nice and it creates a real sense of comfort to go back and to repeat things that you enjoy but we know that if you want to bring excitement into a relationship you need new experiences you need to have this relationship be one in which you take yourself out of your comfort zone, in which you discover something, in which you explore traveling. But it doesn't have to be just traveling by going abroad. It's traveling. It's taking yourself to new places, to new experiences with each other, to new thresholds. All the research backs that up. Mm. It also breeds testosterone, for that matter. Novelty really? breeds testosterone. Mm. That's the work of Helen Fisher. And... If you think, if you look at it metaphorically or biologically, it makes all sense in the world. Growth involves exploration, involves curiosity, involves discovery. We know it, and it involves risk taking. We know it in business, and it is no different in the relationship, yeah. in the business of intimacy, if you want to call mm. it like that. Mm. Wow. Do you do any of these things? Of course, yeah. <laughs> we do it, yeah, for sure. And if we're not. My girlfriend always remind me, like, let's go try something new. You know, if it's been like a week or two where we've kind of been doing the same thing, just like going to the movie or to the same place to eat, she's like, let's go try something new. And I'm like, yeah, we need to. So she's actually good at that because sometimes I can just be focused on mm -hmm. my vision and my work and just like not stop. And it's comfortable to just do the same thing and not have to think about creating right. something new. So, um, but I could see a difference in that creativity and that uniqueness when we go do something different as opposed to the same thing. I can feel the desire mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. curiosity. Testosterone. And then you say thank yeah. you. I mean, yeah. the, the, the difference, of one person says, it's so nice. I mean, I wouldn't have thought about it. Right. I love it when you take me. You remind me. And then I don't mind doing it if I feel appreciated for it. Right. Because then, okay, it became my role. For some reason, I have more availability in my headspace to think about those things. And as long as I know that you really appreciate it, that you value this, that you're coming along not just to do me a favor, right. then I'll come up with more and more ideas. And I will keep this going for years, for years, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. we study erotic couples. I mean, there is, it's, it's not an, an unknown. We know that there are people who maintain a certain spark. And it has nothing to do with how often they make love. But they are engage with each other they enjoy each other's company after decades they still find each other interesting they're not bored mm. mm -hmm. oh what else should we know about this what else should we know about i this? wanted to say one other yes. thing that i had discovered that to me was really important because it is not getting enough uh, attention attention yeah. these days everything these days is about you make it or you break it you end it's not good, you leave. You can do better, you leave. You're not happy, or you could be happier, you leave. And I think that the people who actually want to stay after an infidelity in their relationship are often judged and looked down upon. What's wrong with you? You let him walk all over you. You let her boss you around, you know. Um, yeah, that's scary too. It's kind of like your friends are constantly pressuring you uh, can do better. You don't even tell them. Mm, yeah. I, the majority of people I meet won't tell their friends. To so feel guilty or to feel they like feel weak or whatever, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. You dump the dog on the curb. Right. You know. Forget Throw everything that happened. That's right. The five years of the relationship just... That's right. Three, five, or 25. Right. Out. And I think sometimes out is what needs to happen. But sometimes this happens in a good relationship. And it happened. And, it, and, and we need to know what to do when it happens. But just to judge people and shame them for staying isn't fair. That's not good. It's not right. I don't, I, and I think it really is not giving relationships the credit they deserve. Because mm, they're not perfect. 
Yeah. Because they're, they're not perfect. And you know what? Sometimes what comes afterwards is going to be even better than what was before. Mm, the wake-up call. It's the wake-up the... call. Like when you have an illness, it gives you a new perspective on life. Do I recommend you to get sick? No. <laughs> but do I accept that sometimes out of that crisis, you will actually reprioritize your life and live with a different level of honesty and authenticity? The same happens in a relationship. You've seen this with couples you've worked with? and Again and again. Really? Again and again. But you have to believe in the strength of people mm -hmm. to actually take this, learn from it, resuscitate, and revitalize. Yeah. So if you are the friend of someone who went through infidelity, whereas a girlfriend or boyfriend cheated on them, and you're hearing this as the friend, how do you create oh, a space question. for your friend who went through this to make sure that you're, I don't know, either giving tough love of like, okay, let's make sure this doesn't happen over and over, or what's the structure they can give if they can't hire you or a therapist? No, I think it's a great you know question I mean? because so many of us have been that yeah. friend. And, you know, the first thing I say to the friend is try as best as you can not to insert yourself in the story. It's not about you and what happened to you and what your mother mm. did to your father or your father did to your mother and therefore what your girlfriend needs to do. Try to create a space. It's exactly that. Now, if you have a girlfriend and every time, this is now three times in a row, she finds herself with a guy who treats her like shit, you really do want to tell her this is not okay mm -hmm. and you want to help her pull out. But if you are with a girlfriend or a friend, male friend, and they have been together for 12 years, and from, you know that these people have really been good together, and they've built a lot of things together, tell her, figure it out. I'm, I'm here for you. Mm. I have no idea what's the right thing for you. You know, I'm here to hold you when you doubt yourself. I'm here to remind you that you are more than just the person that just has been shafted and betrayed. I'm here to give you back your sense of value when you think that you have been completely devalued and pushed aside. Mm. I'm here to tell you that you're beautiful when you think that you probably are not beautiful enough anymore. I'm here, you know, I'm going to hold the other view of you that you don't have in this moment because you're so low. Mm. That's my role as a friend. Not to tell you do this or do that and judge you. I mean, the amount of people I've seen who say my best friend doesn't talk to me anymore. Oh my gosh. Because I've decided to stay with, you know, and why? Not because I think he's such a great man or such a great woman. We have four children. My mother is dying. I, uh, you know, I haven't worked in 20 years. I need, you know, or I have, we have a business together. We have a business or, together. Or, yeah. I mean, there are other considerations here. And I am not ready to walk out on all of this. Even if it's not for the quality of my relationship, but it's because my relationship is the nexus on which mm. so many other parts of my life depend upon, and I'm not willing to let all of that go at this point. Who are we to say? Who are we to say? So it's a very delicate thing. When to leave, when to stay, when to try again, when to give up, when to accept finally that this is never going to change, when to know, you know. And I think it's different when you're with a chronic philanderer or, or, and when you were the person who you know for, for years before, the, none of this happened. And this happened, you know, what was going on? And what is the shared responsibility for the deterioration of the relationship as mm. well? What is there things that we coll colluded on together? But yeah. as a friend, you really want to be there to give people back their sense of self-worth at a moment when they feel like it's been sapped out of them. Mm -hmm. More than to tell them. Leave. You know, know, yeah. put, the, put the clothes on the street. Yeah. You know? <laughs> kick them out. Kick yeah, them yeah. out. Kick her out. You know, how they, because the, the fear of staying, the shame of staying, is even worse on men. Oh, my gosh. Oh, really? Oh, yes. So when men get... Because we understand that women are used to... Women, historically, are used to be cheated on. So, oh. you know. Therefore, they need to go now because they finally have the choice to do and the possibility to go. But the guy who stays, what kind of a man are you? Weak. He instantly yeah, yeah. gets emasculated. He's weak. He lets her walk all over him. You know, he has no balls. I mean, his entire masculinity is instantly put on the line. And even more so when you go to Latin cultures and more traditional oh cultures. Gosh. There it's like, you're, 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 you know, horns don't exist on a woman, huh? Right. So how would, a, uh, how would a, a guy friend support the guy who got cheated on? Who, you know... You in... don't start trashing the partner right away. 
That's the first thing on either side. It's so because if I start trashing your girlfriend, look at her. What the you know? The, <laughs> def, what are you gonna do? You're gonna defend her. Oh, You're gonna end up defending yeah, her because yeah. be, and you know it's not that of, bad. It's not. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of you being angry at her, I am now so angry, like as if it happened to me. You know, I'm even more angry than you. So now you're caught in a triangle. Oh. You know, I just need to say, look, man, this is horrible. This is, this sucks. You know, um, what happened there? You know, I, and do you think you've been good to her? Do you think that she had reasons to? Before you start cursing her, maybe we check a little bit on here for the moment too. You know, you know what? It looks like she's not really into you. I mean, she, she mm-hmm. or, or she has issues or... Or maybe she doesn't love you anymore, but, you know, she, you've made it impossible for her to go because you have this business together and you basically told her that she won't get a penny when she goes. Mm-hmm. You know, if you love someone, set them free. If they love you, they'll come back. And if you want to learn more about mastering relationships, then make sure to check out this video right here. I was in a relationship in which when I did one thing bad, it was so overblown and I felt like everything else was being disregarded. That's a sign of a distressed relationship mm. in and of itself. Interesting. 